Hello everyone and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. I'm Sarah Skelly um, and it's springtime here in Vermont finally. Um, we had a very long running and late going winter. Um, Rick and I were just um, looking at historic photos from our farm cam um, that points out to the view behind me and in mid-April in 2013-2014 um, on both of those years, we had, um, you know, no more snow, everything was melted, the grass was already starting to green up. Well, that day, this year, we had a huge snowstorm and um, a lot of mucky, wet snow. So um, it was a surprise, even, even for me, um, you know, having gotten used to these long winters, um, I was pretty ready for it. So, um, yay, melt. Very glad to see the green outside. Hopefully you can see that a little bit. And um, I wanted to talk about a spring activity that's common on farms this time of year, and that's spring shearing for the sheep. Um, so every spring we have our shearer out. She's a professional, and um, I've never learned to shear sheep myself. Um, for one thing, it's pretty time consuming. And um, for another thing, you really do have to practice quite a bit to get good at it, um, especially with the electric shears, you know, they can be a bit dangerous. You can end up cutting yourself, cutting the animal um, if you're not trained properly or um, if you're not doing it right. So because it's such a specialized skill and, you know, our shearer Gwen can knock out um, shearing on our little flock in under half an hour, um, we just have her come out. She does an excellent job. And I also know that the fleeces are gonna be in really good shape. They're not gonna be a lot of second cuts um, or extra uh, trim pieces in the fleece when she's finished. Um, and I just wanted to share some photos with you today and also a little, uh, a few tips um, on getting prepared if you're, if you're having your first shearing. Um, so I wrote a longer article about shearing day a few years ago, and I'll link that up in the show notes for this episode. Um, but just a brief overview, of, of what to do before your shearer appears um, on scene or before you start shearing your sheep yourself. Um, so the first thing is to make sure that you have a nice cleared space for shearing. Um, the floor is all swept up, there's no mud or manure around um, because you have to tip the sheep up onto the floor and of course the fleece is going to get all over the floor and you want to keep the fleece as clean as possible. Um, it also just makes it more pleasant to work. Um, so Rick and I cleaned out the barn a couple of weeks ago. It's a big chore, um, but we got through it. And then the second thing you want to make sure is that the sheep are ready to go. So a couple of things. A lot of shepherds like to withhold food and water for about eight hours at least before shearing. Um, and that's to make sure that the sheep don't have, you know, a full bowel, a full bladder when they're being tipped up and moved around. Um, and also so that they don't evacuate while the shearer is um, shearing. Again, it just makes it more pleasant for everybody. Um, it actually also makes the sheep more comfortable because they don't have that internal pressure when they're being manipulated. And so while they may be a little grumpy with you, um, it, is, it is good to withhold food and water for, for several hours before the shearer um, comes on site. The other thing you really want to make sure of, and this is very important, um, is that the sheep are not wet. So, you know, do pay attention to the weather a few days before shearing, and if it's going to rain or snow, um, you want to get your sheep inside and make sure that they have plenty of time to dry thoroughly. A wet sheep can stay wet for three or four days, so it's really best for them to be inside for a couple of days um, so that their wool doesn't get wet. Um, this really helps the shearer. The, the wet wool creates a lot of problems. First of all, it can ruin a fleece um, because the wetness will create mold and, you know, moldy wool. Um, basically, you have to throw that out. Um, the other thing is that it can, can cause the shearer not to get a good grip um, in their motions. It, it makes the sheep just sort of wet and slimy. And it can also create um, this kind of skin condition um, where the shearer can get an infection in their skin from working with wet sheep and wet wool. So for all those reasons, you want to make sure your sheep are nice and dry. And then the other thing is just to have a good plan for sharing day in terms of traffic flow and make sure you have enough help on hand. Um, and even with just a few sheep, it, 
it goes so much more efficiently if everyone has an assigned task and um, everyone kind of knows what they're supposed to be doing. And for us, I've, you know, I've also helped other farmers um, with their shearing day. And I think whether you're shearing a thousand sheep or three sheep, really having three helpers on hand along with that shearer um, really is, is a good approach. One person's job would be to wrangle the sheep, to grab each sheep, take it to the shearer, and then also take that sheep back to wherever you're putting them after they've been shorn. Another person would help the sheep wrangler with gates and doors um, and kind of traffic flow, make sure that if you're pulling one sheep out of a pen that a whole bunch of them don't come out. Um, and then the third person would be like the sweeper and um, the person to get the, the fleece and put it into a bag um, each time. So, and then the shearer's job is just to shear. Um, you know, and they have the hardest job. So making their job easy again um, is really good. And if you have a small flock, keeping your shearer happy and wanting to come back and shear your sheep is really important. Um, so those are my, my primary tips. And again, I'll link up to an article with a little bit more detail um, and you can read about that. If you have any tips for shearing day or any questions about shearing day, feel free to leave a comment or question on this blog post and I will be sure to answer it. So thanks for watching, thanks for joining me, and uh, coming up, we're going to have more interviews, and Rick and I are also headed down to the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival coming up at the beginning of May, um, so we'll have a kind of a wrap-up um, and behind-the-scenes video for you from, from that big festival coming up in a couple of weeks. Thanks again, and enjoy springtime! <laughs>